Hello class. Today's lesson is going to focus on the circulatory system. Let's start off by answering this question at the top of the page. What exactly is your circulatory system? It's a group of organs and tissues that transport essential materials such as oxygen and nutrients to your body cells and in turn pick up waste product that needs to be removed from the body. Inside of us, we have a network of blood vessels that are branching out and circulating all throughout the body. It is said that if we took every one of our blood vessels and laid them end to end, they would stretch some 60,000 miles, enough to go around the world twice. Have you ever heard of your circulatory system being referred to as or called by a different name? Another name for your circulatory system is your cardiovascular system. Cardio meaning heart, vascular meaning of or through the vessels. In this case, obviously, we're talking about blood vessels. Now, your circulatory system or your cardiovascular system is made up of three basic things. It's made up of the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood itself. Now, an easy way to remember this is something has to do the work. Something is working. In this case, it's the heart. The heart is providing the power. It's pumping. It's pumping your blood through your network of blood vessels that branch throughout the body. Now, in its simplest form, those are the three things that make up your circulatory system. Now, it's also important to remember that not only is your heart an organ, okay, but it's also muscle. We talked about in lesson number two, we talked about the muscles that are form the walls of your heart, which are cardiac muscles. We talked about those muscles are very highly resistant to fatigue. Your heart beats many, many, many times a day. Over and over again, 24 hours a day, your heart is constantly working. So it's very important for that cardiac muscle to be highly resistant to fatigue. And it's that muscle, it's those cardiac muscles, that are providing the power to pump that blood through that ne network of blood vessels. So down at the bottom of the page here, I have two questions for you. Okay, and I want you to think about these questions and bring your answers to class. What do we do to keep our muscles strong and healthy? Okay, and your second question then would be, well, what would we do as a result to keep our hearts strong and healthy? There are three types of vessels that make up the network of blood vessels that flow through our body. The first type of blood vessel that we have are our arteries. Now, these are the type of vessels that carry oxygenated blood away from your heart. Now, you'll notice that I'm underlining the letter A in the word away. This is an easy way for you to identify and remember arteries and what they do. You'll notice that the word away begins with the letter A. The word arteries begins with the letter A. So these are the types of blood vessels that carry that oxygenated blood away from the heart so they can be delivered to your cells and your tissues. You can kind of think of them like the major highways of your blood vessels. The second type of blood vessel that we have are your veins. Now, these are the blood vessels that are returning blood back to the heart, and it has been depleted of oxygen. The oxygen molecules have already been delivered. The blood within these blood vessels do not have oxygen anymore. They need to be, the blood needs to be returned to the lungs so they can pick up the oxygen molecules that we're inhaling from the air, and then eventually be delivered back out through your arteries. The third type of blood vessel are your capillaries. Now these are the smallest blood vessels that we have. They're a very fine, small branching blood vessel that forms a network between your arteries and your veins. And this is where your gas exchange occurs. When we talk about gas exchange within your blood vessels, we're talking about the oxygen from the air and then the carbon dioxide, which is a waste product produced by your cells. This is where that gas exchange occurs. Okay, how do you think circulation works in the body? Do you think that blood flows two ways back and forth or do you think blood flows in a one-way circular pattern well your answer is blood flows in a one-way circular pattern now it was originally believed that blood flowed two ways back and forth however that was soon to be proven false and we came to the realization that blood flowed followed that one-way circular pattern now our, our heart pumps about 5.6 liters of blood per minute which is a lot of work there's a lot of, a lot of work in a short amount of time. 
That adds up to about 1,900 gallons or 7,200 liters of blood being pumped per day. We talked about your cardiac muscle and how it's important for that muscle to be extremely highly resistant to fatigue. And that is just a good example of why. Okay, because your heart is constantly working, has a lot of work to do. And we have two types of circulation occurring in the body. Our first type is what we call pulmonary circulation. And this occurs when blood is carried from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. This is an extremely important stage of circulation because it's during this stage that blood becomes enriched with oxygen. It picks up that oxygen molecule inside of your lungs. Okay. The second type of circulation is called systemic circulation. Once the blood picks up the oxygen molecule and is returned to the heart, the heart will then send the blood out through the arteries to deliver the oxygen, deliver the nutrients to your cells and tissues, and then eventually be returned back to the heart through the veins. Our next question is, what is in our blood? The first thing that we're going to talk about is what makes up over half of your volume of your blood. And the answer to that is plasma. Now plasma is the yellowish watery portion of your blood which contains things like water, nutrients, salts, proteins, and other hormones. And if you look over here to the right, you will see right, an example of our plasma. It makes up roughly about 55% of your blood volume. Within that plasma, the rest of your blood volume is made up of three types of cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. You will see that red blood cells make up 45% of your blood volume, while white blood cells and platelets account for less than 1% of your blood volume. Now, each one of these substances in your blood have a specific function that we're going to talk about as we continue. So what do all these things do? What are their main functions? Okay. The first one, plasma. The main function of plasma is that it transports nutrients throughout the body to your cells and tissues. Okay, so the nutrients that we absorb from the foods that we eat, those nutrients are transported through our plasma and delivered to our cells and our tissues. Now, plasma also has a secondary function which helps to eliminate waste, to transport waste to your kidneys and to your lungs uh, so that you can remove from the body. Red blood cells, the main function of a red blood cell is to carry oxygen. Okay, and there's your key right there, carrying oxygen. Red blood cells work with hemoglobin, they work with iron uh, to help carry that oxygen molecule and deliver it to your cells and your tissues. White blood cells fight off infection or disease or bacteria within the body. So when a foreign substance invades the body, your white blood cells go into action and attempt to devour it, kill it, isolate it. Okay, so that we don't get so that we don't get sick, so that we fight off that infection, so we fight off that bacteria. Platelets are important because what they do is they help to clot your blood at the site of a wound. So when you get a, a wound, a scratch, scrape, or a cut, your platelets go, will go into effect and kind of form a mesh so that, that bleeding stops so we don't continue to bleed out. If we didn't have platelets, anytime we got a scratch, a scrape, or a cut, we would just continue to bleed and bleed and bleed until eventually we bled out. A little more information on red blood cells. We know that red blood cells help to carry oxygen and deliver oxygen within the body. We have an oxygen-carrying protein within our blood that helps red blood cells carry that oxygen, okay? And that is called hemoglobin. Okay? We also have a mineral that binds with red blood cells to help carry that oxygen molecule, and that mineral is iron. Okay, and we'll talk more about these in class. Okay, a little bit more on white blood cells. We talked about white blood cells help to fight off infection, disease, and bacteria within the body. So one or two things will happen. Either they will create substances that will actually destroy the foreign cells, or they will actually go out and find and devour those disease-causing invaders, such as viruses. Now, on average, 
a person has roughly between 5,000 and 10,000 white blood cells per microliter of blood. So, here's your question. What does it mean if the number of white blood cells in your blood increases? Okay. Think about that answer and then bring your answer to class and we'll discuss it in class. Our next topic is blood pressure. Now many of you, if not all of you, have been to the doctor's office where the doctor has placed a blood pressure cuff on your arm and tighten that pressure up. Well, what exactly is he measuring when he's taking your blood pressure? Well, what he's looking at and measuring is the force that blood places against the walls of your blood vessels as it flows through. Now, the medical term for high blood pressure is something called hypertension. Okay. Now, that's the medical term for high blood pressure. Now, as, as we get older, our blood vessels lose their elasticity. They don't stretch as much as they, as they used to. And we start accumulating fatty deposits inside the walls of our blood vessels. And all these things narrow that opening for blood to flow through which causes an increased amount of strain on the heart in order to pump the same amount of blood through those narrowed openings. Those types of things can increase blood pressure. Okay, if you look at number three down here, I have a question for you, and I want you to research your answers and bring your answers to class. What other things can also increase or um, raise a person's blood pressure? Our last topic today is going to be blood types. Now, how many of you know exactly what blood type you are? If you know that answer already, great. If you don't know the answer, do some research at home tonight. Ask mom, ask dad, ask your guardian. They know what blood type you are, and then bring that answer to class. Now, what are these blood types? Well, we have type A. We have type B. We have type AB. And we have type O. Okay. We also have something in the blood called an RH factor, as you can see here. If the RH factor is present, the person is said to be positive. If the RH factor is not present, then the person is said to be negative. So we have eight blood types. We have A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, and O positive, O negative. Those are the eight blood types. Now, how are your blood types classified? Well, according to see the chart down here. Your blood types are classified according to the type of antigen that is found on your red blood cell. Okay. We have an A antigen and a B antigen that are found on blood cells. If the person has the A antigen on their blood cell, down here as you can see I'm circling it, all right, the person is said to be type A. If the person has the B antigen on the red blood cell, they are type B. If they have both A and B antigen on the red blood cells, they are AB. And if they have no antigen, neither A nor B, they are type O. And that's how your blood types are classified, according to that type of antigen. Now, not all blood types are compatible. If you look to the right of the chart over here, you'll see which blood types are compatible with which. Uh, it's important not to mix two blood types that are not compatible because if you do that, what happens is the red blood cells within those blood cells will coagulate or clump together, which will slow down or block blood flow. So by looking at the chart over here, we can answer these two questions down below in the bottom left. Okay, which blood type is known as universal donor? Well, type O is the universal donor. And which blood type is known as universal receiver? That would be AB. Okay, and we'll talk more about these in class.